young people are using it to you. So it's a, it's a chat that you type in, uh, create a new, uh, a research paper on Ukraine or something. Say you have an assignment for school. It will, when you type that in, spit out a research paper. Matter of fact, um, so I went on there because I'm writing a book right now and I wanted to see if it would do a chapter. Good news. If you're a writer, particularly one as good as I am, chat GPT don't got nothing. It can't. It ain't, it ain't ready. It ain't ready to, to do that level of work. So I was happy. I was like, is this going to replace me? It will not. But I'm also doing these little blurbs because um, top of February, I'm launching uh, a past the baton uh, series for my clothing line. And so I have to write blurbs on the people in that the baton is being passed to. So I was like, let me see what kind of information I've already done it. But I was like, let me see. So I put in um, the chat and his chat GPT. Why did Mahalia Jackson hand the microphone to Mavis Staples at the Summer of Soul in Harlem? Chat AI said, I'm sorry, I couldn't find any credible information about Mahalia Jackson handing a microphone to Mavis Staples at Summer of Soul in Harlem. It's important to note that both Mahalia Jackson and Mavis Staples were influential gospel singers and civil rights activists. They did not perform together at the same events. Mahalia Jackson passed away in 1972, and the Summer of Soul Festival, also known as the Harlem Cultural Festival, did not take place until 1969. I apologize if any confusion was caused by my previous response. So I was like, oh, wait a minute, you have inaccuracies, uh, (laughs) sir. So I said, Mahalia Jackson absolutely shared a stage with Mavis Staples at Summer of Soul Festival in Harlem. Chat AI responded, I apologize for the confusion in my previous response. It's not possible that Mahalia Jackson shared a stage with Mavis Staples at the Summer of Soul Festival in Harlem, as Mahalia Jackson passed away in 1972 and the festival took place in 1969. My previous response was based on the information provided, and I apologize for any confusion caused. And I was like, it is absolutely possible if Mahalia Jackson died in 1972, is what I type back, she definitely could be on the stage in 1969. So it said, you are correct. I apologize for the mistake in my previous response. Mahalia Jackson was still alive in 1969, and it would have been possible for her to share a stage with Mavis Staples at Summer Soul Festival in Harlem. However, I could not find any credible information or records about Mahalia Jackson and Mavis Staples sharing a stage together during the festival or any other event. It's important to note that while both Mahalia Jackson and Mavis Staples were influential gospel singers and civil rights activists, they were not known to have performed together. I apologize for any confusion caused by my previous response. Uh, I said, I I, I responded, I'm not messing with chat GPT with this bad information. (laughs) And this is why we need to be careful. (laughs) Yep. Because if I didn't know this, I would have accepted that information as fact and gospel, which is why human beings must know things. You cannot rely on technology, on Wikipedia, on AI. We got to know. So then I wrote back, (laughs) excuse me, there is a video of Mahalia Jackson and Mavis Staples on the same stage in a documentary that won an Oscar, Summer of Soul. But you have no information verifying this? Question mark. Chat AI. I apologize for any confusion caused by my previous response. The information provided was not accurate, and I apologize for the mistake. I did not have the information that Mahalia Jackson and Mavis Staples shared the stage together in the Summer of Soul Festival in Harlem, which was a series of concerts that took place in 1969. It was later documented in the film Summer of Soul. I gave them the information, by the way. Okay. Or when the revolution could not be televised, directed by Amir Questlove Thompson, which won an Oscar, which I gave them the information, by the way, in in 2021, my previous responses were based on my knowledge cutoff, which was 2021. And I apologize for any confusion. So then I put amazing, not in a good way. I apologize for any confusion. So I went on in this back and forth. And what I realized in my uh, uh, argument that I was having with chat GPT, a couple of things. First of all, I was literally feeding it information that it didn't have, that it then incorporated into the next response as I was giving it information it was learning. So black folk, we got to be on here because if we're not on here, it won't have the information. But at the same time, if we're on there, we're also giving it information. Do we want to do that? So I wanted to do this, Renee, but I'm too much of a, you know, I'm too too pristine with misinformation being out there. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm a champion against misinformation in any form. I was going to feed it bad information, 
to see if it would incorporate the bad information and spit it back to me. But I didn't want to be responsible for putting bad information into this chat bot. But I might do it for uh, melanemic people. I ain't going to do it for black people. I'm just saying I might (laughs) say something really. But I'm like, I was thinking about it, but I was like, I ethically I couldn't do it. I I can't teach and be before a classroom with students having contributed to the very thing that I'm fighting against. But this thing is dangerous at the same time. It it could be liberating in the right hands. But here's my problem with this. There's a number of problems. First of all, Microsoft just paid spent billions of dollars uh, in this chat GPT um, technology and the makers of this uh, chat GPT, which is called open AI. Microsoft just made a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment in the artificial intelligence startup, open AI and other tools. So now you'll be in the Microsoft world being able to access this, this technology. Uh, this is a San Francisco based company, it is a billion dollar investment. It started this with in 2019. Here's my other problem. The creators open AI reportedly, uh, they were able to raise $29 billion. They have a $29 billion valuation, potential $10 billion investment from Microsoft, as I just mentioned, that would make open AI, which was funded uh, in this by the San Francisco in San Francisco, one of the most valuable AI companies in the world. But the success is not Silicon Valley success. All right. Here's what you need to know. Time Magazine did an investigation and here's what they found. Chat GPT, where did they find the people to input all of this information? Where do you think? Where do you think they went? Silicon Valley? No, no, no. They went to an English speaking place, Kenya. They used Kenya laborers and they paid them $2 an hour, $2 an hour, $2 an hour. Kenyan sat and inputted this data. Over several years, $2 an hour, they paid Kenyans to input this information. $2 an hour, they're going to be worth, they're, they're valued at $29 billion. Microsoft just gave them another $10 billion. And they paid Kenyans, Africans, $2 an hour. And here's what they said uh, in outsourcing to Kenya, this, this company said, to Kenya, Uganda, and India. All right. So two African nations in India, um, they they said that this they they claim that they've helped lift more than 50,000 people out of poverty. Well, I mean, perspective is a thing is a hell of a thing Um, that makes sense when you consider uh, how much Kenyans make. So while yes, yes, you you might have. But here's according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, uh, they show the country country's annual gross national income is eleven dollars. And six, uh, no, eleven point six percent. Um, that's one thousand nine hundred and seventy nine dollars. That's how much the average person makes one thousand nine hundred seventy nine dollars. So, uh, so two dollars an hour is probably a, a leg up, uh, according to an early report. Um, just eighty three hundred individuals in Kenya own the same uh wealth as the rest of the country. So the the one percent there is like point one percent. Um, and we're talking about a country with 45 million people, most of whom uh, bring home 3000. Uh, no, there were 3000 uh, millionaires uh, for, among 45 million people. Uh, and 88 have the net worth of more than 30 uh, million. Uh, it's placing them in a higher. So it's like 0.01 percent of the people there. Uh, or high net worth earners. So yeah, I guess two dollars. So you think, you, but you you started a multi billion dollar company off wow. the backs of once again, y'all. Once again, yeah. I'm I'm struggling with this. 